being raised in a Croatian household, um, we would go back to Croatia for summer, not every summer, every third or fourth year as kids because it was just you know, a chance for them to go back and visit their family. My grandparents were, were still in Croatia and my mom had um, uh, a, a brother there, my uncle, and my dad had a sister. So, you know, they wanted to see their family. And for us as kids, it was really neat because we wouldn't just go to this country called Croatia. At then it was the former Yugoslavia, but we would go to literally to islands because my mom was from an island called Dugi Otok off the city of Zeller. My dad also from the same area, but a different island called Ugljan. And uh, it was just cool. It was a great way to spend the summer because we would be there for two, three months and every day swimming, every day playing with your friends and just hanging out. And we loved it. We loved going there. So being on an island, uh, everything was done with boats. You didn't really use cars so much, especially back then. Now it's gotten a lot more modern, more people have cars. Back then, most people didn't really have a car on the island. And so if you wanted to go somewhere, you had to go by boat. And I have two stories that really were fun stories growing up that both involved going out with my friends on boats. Uh, first one was in my dad's village, uh, which was called Stomistica on the island of Ugan. Um, they had just won the island soccer championship. And there was this big celebration party in another village that everybody wanted to go to. Well, us younger guys, high school age, really didn't have a way to get there. The other guys had ways. So we decided that we really, really wanted to go. And so uh, we stole one of the guys' dad's boats. And it was no big deal. They, these guys were from islands. They know how to operate boats. Um, but for one thing, they didn't check the little thing that there's like a wooden plug at the bottom of the boat. And for some reason, they didn't check it. So we were pulling in a dock. And just when we're about to get dock, we realized we were just about to sink. The water, the boat was completely filled with water. And they had these like coffee cans. And we all took these coffee cans and we we're just throwing water out of the boat, is throwing the water, throwing it. And we barely, barely got to dock without sinking his, his dad's boat. And uh, so yeah, that was fun. And then on my mom's side, uh, I think the same summer actually, um, we were going to a soccer tournament on a different island and had to get up super, super early in the morning to go before, um, like it was crack of dawn. Um, and when we got up, we realized the skies were super dark and cloudy, and you could see that there was a storm coming. And it was such a bad storm that one of the guys who was supposed to go with us basically said, we're not going, it's dangerous, we gotta stay home. And another guy was like, no, what, what are you talking about? We're going, we've, this, we've been talking about this tournament for weeks. And they almost got in a fist fight over it because they were that, they, the guy was that adamant that we don't go. So we said, well, look, if you don't wanna go, you stay behind, we're, we're going. So. We're on the way to this, this soccer tournament on a different island. We're about halfway there, out on completely open sea, and the skies now are like pitch black dark with clouds, and you know that storm's gonna come. And we realized that we had made a mistake and we better go somewhere close to shore before you know it gets really bad. Because people, you know, these little boats out at sea, there are stories that get lost at sea. So we we pull in this one dock, and just as we arrive, you know, the skies open up and it's pouring rain. Well, we had arrived on this place called Molat, and it just turned out that on Molat that day, there was gonna be a basketball tournament. We were supposed to play in a soccer tournament on this other island, and we are like, okay, we're here, we'll play in the basketball tournament. I, I was happy, because actually at the time, I was a better basketball player than soccer player anyway, so it kind of suited me, and uh, real happy about that. And so we decided to go get something to eat, and we get to this one store, they've got prosciutto and salami and all this stuff, and we're ready to pay, and they realized that the baker hadn't delivered uh, any bread that day. And I was like, all right, whatever, we can eat this stuff. And these guys were like old school. They're like, no, you do not eat salami and prosciutto without bread, we're leaving. I'm like, what are you talking about, we're leaving? We're gonna play the basketball drink. But we're leaving, we can't, they were offended. They were literally, we cannot eat this without bread. So we're like, all right, I guess we're not gonna play basketball. So we get on the boat and we go to this other island uh, or this village called Bojava for lunch. And we figure we're gonna eat lunch have a nice meal, go home and call it the day. So we have our lunch, after lunch, there's this little basketball court that has soccer goals right by where, we're, where we ate. And we were like, well, let's play one game of soccer since we didn't get to play in a tournament. We'll play the old guys against the young guys, little soccer game, they had goals on each end of the basketball court. Winners um, or losers have to pay for a drink. Okay, so we play. The, the old guys beat us, I was on the younger team. They beat us, whatever the score was. We go back to the restaurant to have our drink. The young guys pay for the drink and we're like, okay, let's go. The old guys are like, wait a minute, no way. We don't let you young punks buy us a drink, we buy you a drink. So they buy us a drink and then we're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We had a bet, fair and square, you guys beat us. 
if you guys can't buy the drink, we have to buy a drink, we're buying a drink. And you can see where this is going. We went back and forth buying drinks, buying drinks, buying drinks. So we're having drinks and we had earlier tried to make a call back to the uh, village where my mom was from, Villarat, to let them know that we were okay. But the phone lines were down. It, whenever it rained over there, the phone lines would always go down and they would come back a couple hours later. So we were like, okay, we'll just call back later. We tried again, again, we didn't get through, no big deal. Well now, over the course of this afternoon, we're drinking more and more and more and we'd forgotten to call. And now it's getting close to evening. It's like late afternoon, early evening, probably about 6 p.m. We go down to the boat and we're gonna go home. Well, as luck would have it, the boat was tied on the dock right next to another bar. So we said, well, we'll just have one more and then we're gonna go back. Well, one more turned into, I can't even tell you how many more. And it was now after midnight and we were still drinking and we finally got into the boat and decided to go back. And all the way there, we're like singing and we're having this great time. And um, we realized about halfway home, oh wait, we never called them. They're probably worried about us, which is a huge understatement. They were absolutely certain that we were lost at sea because we had left like at six o'clock in the morning. Now it's two o'clock in the morning and or midnight, I don't know whatever time it was, it was late and no word from us. So we're singing and singing and singing. We get back and we think, okay, this will be fun. We're gonna, when we pull into dock, we're gonna sing and we're gonna just let them all know we're back. And that's exactly what we did. We pull up to dock and just as we pull up to dock, we just start bursting out into song. And I have never seen anything like this. It would be like a war hero returning home for the war. The whole village comes running out down to the docks. There's little old ladies up in windows waving white handkerchiefs because they're so happy that we're not dead at sea and that we've returned and we're alive, that they give us this like hero's welcome, right? And they wanna know how we did in the tournament and the way we're singing, they're automatically assuming that we're the champions of this tournament. So we're not only returning alive, but we're returning champions. We didn't have the heart to tell them that we didn't even play in the tournament. And that night, everybody was so nice to us. The next day, whole different story. Oh.